Hello everyone, welcome to the video lecture series of Theory of Automata and Formal Languages. We are into unit number 2 and we are learning about fine, uh, regular languages and regular expressions. So, uh, we have in my previous video, we have, con uh, we have completed the closure properties of a regular language. Now, in this video, we will be starting off with decision properties of a regular language. So, before starting off with the decision properties, as I have already mentioned over here, uh, we will be discussing about a topic known as problem. Okay, and uh, this problem topic we will be discussing also in unit number 5 uh, after completion of Turing machine. Okay, and uh, we will also know a few other problems as well. Okay, now actually this decision properties uh, depends on certain uh, parameters and uh, we consider those parameters as one kind of a problem. And um, uh, if we talk about problem, uh, first you should know about problem, then we will move on to these properties. If we talk about a problem, problem is nothing but uh, problem is nothing but you can either solve that particular problem so I can say as solvable okay or what we can do or not solvable so you cannot solve that particular problem okay so if I uh, give you an example that uh, is a human boy human being is able to uh, create the universe again so is it possible for a human being no it's not a possible thing so that is not at all solvable problem so it will be directly you can also say not solvable or unsolvable problem okay unsolvable problem so the actually this category generally this example that i have asked you generally falls into unsolvable problem but uh, if you if i ask you that is it possible for you to ride a bike yes i can say it's a solvable one so i can come to come across with solvable okay so if you look into this scenario solvable are again you can say you can say divide into solvable into two type two parts okay one is decidable okay that means if the algorithm exists decidable okay and the other one we can say as as not decidable or uh, you can say undecidable okay undecidable so these are the categories of solvable and unsolvable topics okay or a problem so decidable means if there state if there exists an algorithm we can say decidable if it is if there doesn't exist any kind of algorithm we say that it's undecidable so properly this particular topic will be learning in unit number five and we will look into that particular topic very nicely okay so uh, this is just a uh, problem definition that i was talking about okay now we will look into these properties that i have already mentioned over and we will try to stick on to the properties and we will be able to learn what proper what these properties are all about okay so let's first start off with emptiness proper problem now actually emptiness problem is a decidable problem okay it's a decidable problem okay so this is your first point to be notified okay so emptiness problem i can say is a decidable problem now what does emptiness problem says that okay. it's to check or you can say to, to check whether a given whether a given finite automata finite automata accepts empty language or non-empty language okay accepts empty language or non-empty language so this is what your decide uh, sorry emptiness problem says okay so we you know to check that whether the finite automata accepts empty language or non-empty language so this is the main motive of emptiness problem so as i have already told you that that uh, as it is a decidable problem definitely there will be existing an algorithm okay the problem i think you have understood that to check whether a finite automata accepts empty language or non-empty language so what does the algorithm states first process first uh, uh, step will be that to eliminate all the inaccessible which are not able to access from the finite automata so those states you have to eliminate okay so and the second step says that if the resultant finite automata consists of at least at least one final state so we can directly say that that there will be a possibility that the finite automata accepts an empty, lang empty language or a non-empty language if it is a non-empty language it means that definitely there will be a string or there will be a final state so we will say that that is a non-empty state if there are no states uh, if there is a state suppose and there are no strings or no transition then we will say that that is an empty language correct and that is your uh, that is which, which the final which this problem says that. 
okay so emptiness problem generally uh, explains that we have to check whether a finite given finite automata accepts empty language or non-empty language okay therefore i can finally say that this means that finite automata will accept non-empty language otherwise it accepts empty language okay so this is the problem that was been given and this is the first property of uh, decision property of a regular language okay now moving to the next one uh, is a very uh, like uh, uh, you can say a common one okay finiteness problem okay as we are talking about finite automata definitely we are talking if as we are talking about regular language we are talking about finite automata and definitely the com the concept of finiteness will come okay now what does this finiteness problem says it states that the language is accepted by given finite automata is either finite or not okay and therefore if the algorithm exists then finite finiteness problem is a decidable problem if there is no algorithm then definitely it is not a decidable problem so directly i cannot say that this is a decidable problem if there is an algorithm exist for this then we will say that this is a decidable problem otherwise it is not so as the definition says that it states that the language accepted by given finite automata is finite or not so this is the main con the main uh, checking that you have to do for a finiteness problem and as i've told you that if algorithm exists in finite automata the finiteness problem is said to be decidable otherwise it is not decidable so some or the other i've brought an algorithm for this okay now first step is always the same as emptiness problem that uh, to eliminate the inaccessible states from the finite automata okay second thing is that you have to eliminate the states from which the final states are not reachable okay if you're not reachable to the from the final states then they have to eliminate those states and the third is that if the resultant finite automata if there exist any kind of loops or cycles loop and cycle means definitely there will be an infinite number of possible of strings then the automata accepts infinite language otherwise it is a finite so that means finiteness problem will carries out two different criteria one is a finite uh, language and the other one is infinite language so if there is a loop or cycle in a particular diagram in a particular finite automata then we can directly say that that is an infinite language and if we are not having any loop and simple uh, finite automata is there simple transitions are there one to one transition then we can say that that is a infinite uh, finite language so definitely if there is an algorithm we can define that finiteness problem is a decidable language so this is all about finiteness and emptiness now moving to the third one equivalence problem Okay, so regarding this problem, you have already studied in equivalence of two finite automata, where the condition for equivalence of two finite automata is that two can two finite automata over uh, any input alphabet are equivalent if they accept the same set of strings over this one. So already we have discussed about this particular topic in my previous lecture in unit number one as I, as well. So and in the second condition, it says that when two finite automata are not equivalent, there is some string w. Over the input alphabet that satisfies the following condition. Okay, now what is the following condition? One automata reaches a final state on application of W, uh, whereas the other automata reaches a non-final state. So, if you find a particular pair of uh, states where you are getting a final and a non-final combination, then what we can say that the, those two finite automata are not equivalent. So, these are the basic two conditions that we have to follow in order to find out the in order to solve the equivalence problem so i think i would suggest that for this particular problem equivalence problem i would uh, suggest to go to uh, to study the equivalence of two finite automata where i have understood these two conditions and based on that we have also understood uh, in my that particular lecture where we have seen uh, regarding that two automata are given how to prove that these two automata are not equivalent to each other or equivalent to each other okay so basically for equivalence of two finite automata you have to follow these two strings these two conditions condition number one says that if both the automata is having the same set of strings that is number one condition and second condition says that two automata are said to be not equivalent if on re on seeing any input symbol it is reaching a final automata a finite state or non final state or a final or non final state final state combination then we can say that both the automata are not equivalent okay so this is a condition that we have seen for equivalence problem okay so i think equivalence problem is clear to everyone uh, now we are moving into the last topic that is your membership problem okay so for membership problem it is actually uh, is very simple as the term only says that it's membership it depends on the member of a particular topic 
now to check that the given string x is accepted by a given finite automata or not it is decidable because reading the complete string if it is in the final state then we can directly say that it is a member or if reading on a final of reading at that particular string it doesn't reach to the final state then we can say that it is not a member of that particular language so based on these two criteria i can directly say that membership problem is a decidable one because it is having a solution for it if you having an algorithm for it what is that algorithm so what it says that uh, to check that a particular string is accepted by or not by given finite automata you have to follow these two steps so if you am mentioning that it's a step so definitely it will be an algorithm <laughs> so first of all it is decidable because by reading the string if it reaches the final state then it is a member as i have already told you okay then if the string halts in a non final state then directly we can say that that is not a member of the given finite automata okay so that is nothing but a string is acceptable by the final state or not if it is acceptable by the final state then it is a member of the particular finite automata if it is not accepted by the final state then we can say that that is that it is not a member of the finite automata so this is all about the four different type of properties that we have understood in decision pro Uh, properties of regular language where we have discussed about emptiness problem and then finiteness problem we have discussed about equivalence problem i would suggest for equivalence problem you please refer equivalence of two finite automata there i have given an example as well uh, i think two examples i have given and then uh, the last one is nothing but the membership problem so hope you have understood both the properties that is closure properties and decision properties it is very important topic if you are attempting any kind of university examinations or if you are attempting any kind of competitive exams as well okay so thank you for watching the video in the next video i will come across with one more topic which is very much important because that is the origin of this particular properties that is known as pigeon hole principle okay thank you for watching the video